Hi guys, so still talking about standing waves, but today we're going to talk about standing waves produced by sound. So typical examples are the flute. So flute is just a tube, it's open at both ends, and you have holes here. You know, when you are playing the flute, so you can change the length of um, of the tube in which you are making the standing waves. And another example will be if it's uh, closed at one end, open at the other end, that will be a clarinet. Okay. So before, before talking about that, before doing the math, let's look at a few demos. So this one is just a very cool demonstration that I forgot to show you. It's a famous, uh, demo in physics, it's called Gladni plates. So I'm not sure if I say it right. It's a German, German name, Gladni plate. And it's a way where you can make, um, standing waves in two dimensions. So you have a plate here. It's a metal plate and you, you place it on a speaker. You make a, a sound with a given frequency. And you have all these uh, cool patterns. So if you go from high frequency to low frequency, you're going to decrease the number of patterns that you see. Lower the frequency, less patterns that you're going to see. Okay. You can, um, you can Google that and, uh, you, you can find, you can find out more about it, but it's a very, very cool demo. So I'm uh, skipping through, but here you decrease the frequency. Okay. Until you get, if you get to the fundamental, you should see like circle, a circle. Okay. So I found that demo on the website. Just how to keep track of all of the website I'm using. Okay, this website here, he, he has many demos, um, covering acoustics and the, uh, sound, physics of sound. Okay, so let's go back to more videos, standing waves with sound. Okay, so just another one, which is cool. Cool video here. So this is also a very famous uh, demonstration. You can um, look it up online. It's called Ruben Tube. Ruben Tube. So it's just a tube. Okay. And uh, you, you play music at one end and you can visualize the standing wave with fire because a, a sound wave, a sound wave um, it's, it's just a longitudinal wave with some places you, you see the, the, the air molecule will be squeezed together. So you have more air, more oxygen. So the flame here will be higher and some place the, 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 the air molecule will be moving away from each other. So you have less oxygen. So the flame won't be that high. The standing waves here. So this is called the Ruben tube. So interesting, as he goes higher in frequency, okay, so then the fundamental is has a higher frequency, so you're gonna see more bumps, right? As you go lower in frequency, you're going to see less bump. So it will be lower pitch. So that's a cool video also. Another one where you can visualize the standing waves. See those little drop of water. So this is high pressure, low pressure, 
high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So you can visualize the standing wave here. So low, high, low, high, low, high. That's super cool. Very nice. So just, uh, we, I'm, I'm going to make a playlist for, um, to talk about waves, but just to show you sound waves. So you have air molecules here. So air molecules, they are always vibrating at random motion. So that means how fast they are moving randomly depends on the temperature. If you increase the temperature, so those molecules are going to move faster. So if I, produce a sound here, you're going to see I'm going to make a sound wave that is moving at a given speed. But you see here, this is high pressure, so the molecule will be squeezed together. And this is low pressure, so the molecules are stretched out, okay? So there you have less less molecule here, more molecules there. So that's why if you are, if you are making a Ruben tube, for example, then when you're going to have the high pressure, high pressure, you have more air molecules, so the flame of the fire will be higher. And the second video I'll show you, you can place a droplet of water where, where the, the pressure is low. You can, you can see that maybe on the graph, you see where you see a bump here that's going to be high pressure when you see a throw that will be low pressure. Okay, so so how does it work? So let me show you an applet here. So it, this is a flute. And you see the fundamental, the fundamental, so the first one, the first harmonic or the fundamental that you can get if in the flute. So it's open at both ends. So here the air molecules can move freely. And here it doesn't move. So here you have a node, so it doesn't move. And here and there you have an anti-node. So that will be your fundamental. So if I go back to my drawing here, you see, that will be your fundamental. The, so the first, the first natural frequency, the first normal mode. And we're going to do the math. But you can see that this is one fourth of a wavelength, one fourth of a wavelength. So that will be half of a wavelength, half of a cycle, right? So the harmonics that you're going to get, fundamental, first overtone, second overtone, third and fourth, will be exactly the same as the, the same ones that you get with a rope. Remember the rope with um, two tight and so we have here so the first harmonic was half a wavelength the second harmonics was one wavelength the third one was one and and a half the fourth one will be one and two and so forth and so on and we and we got this uh, equation here so Here, you're going to get the same thing. So let's go back to the app. So that will be the first uh, uh, harmonic, you see. Those molecules here are not moving, only those ones are moving. So if you think about that um, in terms of pressure, the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. So here you have atmospheric pressure, the same as the atmospheric pressure, the same as the atmospheric pressure. And in between, either you're going to have above the atmospheric pressure or below the atmospheric pressure. So let's look at higher. So that's a fundamental. So the second one, second one will be that one, right? So it has to be, since it's open at both ends here, you must have here, you must have an anti-node, okay? Because it's free to move up and down. And here you have one node, and here you have a second node, right? 
So what you get, you're going to get that it's going to be one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. So that will be one cycle because it comes back to the same place, right? So that will be the second harmonics or the first overtone. And again, you see that at the end, it's free to move. So you need to have an anti-node. And then you have two nodes here where the molecules are not moving here. And here it's moving again. And, and you can look at the, here is just show you the, the difference with the atmospheric pressure. So that will be this one. Now you can go higher. Okay. So that will be the third harmonics. You see? So the, again, open and open. So you must have an anti node and you have one, two, three. So three nodes, right? So if you look here, one, two, three. So three nodes for the third harmonics, two nodes for the second harmonic, one node for the first harmonic. And we can keep going up. So now how many in between? Uh, where are we? We are here. So four, right? So one, two, three, four. So four nodes here. One, two, three, four, that will be the fourth harmonics, etc., etc. Okay, you can increase one, two, three, four, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So that will be the fifth harmonics, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now I can, um, one side open, can change here. Lower. Let's go back to the fundamental. So that will be your clarinet. So here you have a note, okay? Because you see the, the, the molecules cannot move about their position of equilibrium, but they are moving here. So that will be the fundamental. So fundamental, you see here, that will be a tube which is closed at one end and open here. So if you if you, we, we'll do the math, but you see that here it's just one fourth of a wavelength. Okay, so then you go higher. So higher. So the first harmonic you have um, the second harmonics, but the first overtone you have one note. Okay, so that will be this one. One node, and here it's a anti node. So you have a node here. So all together, if you if, if you find out how many nodes all together, you have one here and there, one there. So second um, harmonics so or first overtone, one node, two nodes. You see how it works here, and then. The next one, higher, again, you're going to have one, two, three nodes. Okay, so that will be the third harmonics. By the way, even for the flute, for the third one, you have one, two, three nodes. But you see the, the configuration is not the same. And if you want to find out how many cycles you can fit inside, so that will be one fourth, two fourth. Three fourth, four fourth, five fourth, so five fourth. Okay. And you can go higher again and higher and higher. So that will be fourth overtones, uh, overtone that will be the fifth harmonic. So one, two, three, four, five. You have a note here. So it's closed at one end and open at the other end. So you can have um, close and close, of course. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get the same thing like uh, you, you had for the, um, for the rock. So I have found an amazing website that I want to share with you if I, if I can find the website here. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is the website. So I highly recommend that website. They have amazing simulations that I didn't know about. And it's even better uh, simulation, open, open. So that will mean like a, a flute. You see it's open here. It's open both sides. And it's going to be, the, you ha you're going to have one node here at the center. So we are here. So open, open. And mode number two, we can visualize what's going on inside here. Mode number three. So you see the three nodes, one, two, three. Mode number four. Number eight. So it's a great way to visualize what's going on. And if you have, so this is open, open. You have closed, open. So that will be your clarinet. So mode number one, only one hand is moving. This one is closed. So you have one mode, uh, one note. So that would be this one here. And then that will be a second mode here. So one node, two nodes, three, four, five, and so forth and so on. So this is, so before, before we move on, uh, there was another thing I wanted to show you from that website. It's the Fourier series. So we talked about music and when you are playing an instrument, the pitch that you hear is the fundamental, but all the overtones that is, that are added to the fundamental is going to make interesting waveform. Okay, and that will give you the tone quality of the instrument, the timber. And then we talk about any signal. So it doesn't have to be music, it could be another kind of signal. Any mu music or any signal can be um, decomposed in a sum of sine waves. So this is called Fourier series. So here you see how to make a square wave uh, just using sine wave. So that you have the first sine wave, and then you have two sine, sine wave that you add together. So you get something like this, and then you get, get another one that will be the third uh, sine wave that you add, and you get something like this. If you add 10 of them, you know, you get something like that. And finally, if you have 50 of them, then you get very close to a square wave. So even when you have a square wave, like in electronics, you can uh, you can get that as a superposition of many, many sine waves. So just a uh, parenthesis. So let's go back to my um, uh, standing waves here. So another video, I already show you this one, but here it's going to show you that um, if you have two tubes and the tubes are of the same length, you're not going to hear the same frequency, the same fundamental, whether the tube is closed at one end or open and open. So, of course, if you listen to a flute or if you listen to the clarinet, if you compare the fundamental, you're going to get higher frequency for the flute. And you can see that because for the same number, wave number, you can see you can place more bumps into a flute that you can place in the clarinet. So you get higher frequency here for the same wave number. So he's, he's going to show you that in this demo. I think it's at the end, so I'm going to skip. Okay, this is a demonstration. All these all these all these pipes that I've shown you so far are open on both ends. 
if you ask what happens when you close one end, and I'm just going to put my hand across it to close this end, then, uh, well, first I'll do it with it open, then close it. So you'll notice that the sound is lower. In fact, uh, if you ignore end effects, uh, then the theory produ predicts that the sound is actually one octave lower, the frequency being half of its original value. That is the reason That's the reason why a clarinet sounds lower than a flute does. Flute and clarinet both have about the same length. The flute is open on both ends, but the clarinet, the mouthpiece end is effectively closed. And so the lowest notes you can produce on a clarinet are much lower than the, the notes you can produce on a flute. So that's interesting. You also notice that if you leave both ends open, open, and this one is open, open, it depends on the length of the tube, right? So longer the tube, then lower the frequency. And if you are interested more in the physics of music, I have a video to recommend, a YouTube video. So this one is interesting, the flute and the clarinet. And you have also a website that uh, go through the physics of music. If you're interested, that will be the, the website. I think I'm going to put that in the, in the description. Okay. I think that's all for the simulations. Just I want, uh, now I want to go, uh, I want to go and, and do the math here. Let's see if you can do that. So here, let's start with the easiest case. So if you have a flute or organ pipe and the length is uh, given, okay? So it's gonna be open on both sides. So here and there you have a knot I node. And here you have one node, right? So let's uh, just review before that, what's a cycle or a wave, uh, just one cycle. So that will be one wavelength. So that means that here, from here to there, what you get here, that will be one fourth of a wavelength. Okay. So another one, one fourth. So that will be just one bump is half, of course. That will be another one fourth and that will be another one fourth. Okay. So in that case here, the first, so that will be your fundamental. Okay. So that will be the frequency that you're going to hear as the pitch, okay, when you are playing music. So the first one, so that will be the fundamental. So you're going to have one-fourth and one-fourth of the wavelength. So that means your length equals one-fourth and one-fourth is a half, half of a wavelength. So this is half of a cycle. So that means that the longest wavelength that you get here inside equals uh, that's a two here i don't know why it is a four it's going to be uh two times l it's going to be two times l right so the frequency of your fundamental so the first so that will be the lowest that frequency that you make with the flute here. That's going to be a V over 2L times 1. That will be the, that will be V. V is the speed of sound. And the speed of sound is about 343 meter per second, about. It depends on the temperature. And then the second one, so that will be the first overtone of the second harmonics. Okay, so now you have one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. So that's one cycle. So L equals 
one cycle, one wavelength. So that will be just L. So just two L over two. Mm -hmm. So the second um, frequency, so the second harmonics, so the first overtone for the natural frequency, it's going to be V, V, um, over 2L times 2. And then the third one, of course, you have guess, it's going to be V over 2L times 3. So actually, you get exactly the same frequency as um, as you did for the, the string with two nodes here and one anti-node here. So you get exactly the same formula. So you get that F sub N equals N V over 2L and N equals 1, 2, 3, and so forth, and so on. So you, you see that in that case, to go from the first to the second, you multiply by 2. So this is called 1 octave. From the first to the third one, you multiply by 3. And then you multiply by 4, that will be a second octave. Okay, so now let's go to the clarinet. So you see it's closed at one end and open here. So I don't know if I can go to my uh, nice website here. It was closed at one end, open at the other one. Close, 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 open. Okay. You see it's closed at one end, open at the other, other end here. So you have only one node that the node is here. So let's go back to here. So you see that the lamp, the lamp of the tube here is L and inside you can put one fourth of a wavelength. So the longest, that will be the longest wavelength for the fundamental. So L equals one fourth of the wavelength. So the first wavelength, the longest wavelength will be four times L. So the first frequency will be V over four L. So it's interesting because you see compared to that one, here you have V over two L and here you have V over four L. So that means that with a clarinet, the fundamental, the lowest frequency that you get is lower, one octave lower than the first frequency, the lowest frequency that you get with the flute. From here to there, you divide by two. So the, the clarinet will give you one octave uh, down. Okay is divided by two, so lower frequencies with a clarinet compared to a flute. So that will be the fundamental. And then you have the second, uh, the first overtone or second harmonics. So then you have how many four? So one and two and three. So again, you have two notes, one, two, three. So you have three wavelengths divided by four. So you're going to go one, two, three. You have that much that you can fit into there. So the wavelength for the second harmonic equals four L over three. So the second harmonic, the natural frequency here, it's going to be um, V times 3 over 4L. So interestingly, you see that to go from here to there, you multiply by 3. Okay, you go by odd numbers. And then for the third one, so F, F sub 3, it's going to be, so you can keep going. So 1, 2, so 1, 2, three, four, five. 
So it's going to be uh, 5 times this. So here I have a 4L. Uh, L, this is L here, sorry, this is L. 4L over 5. So the third harmonic equals V over 4L times 5. Okay, so to go from the first tier to the third one, to the third harmonic, you multiply by 5. So now the equation is not the same. You have this equation here, so it's V over 4L times N, but the wave number has to be odd. So it's going to be 1 or 3 or 5 or 7, so forth and so on. And same thing for the welcome height. So it's going to be 4L over L. So that will be open, open. That's going to be close and close here and open there. Okay, so here you can see different modes. So this is closed and open here. Okay. So here you have the solutions. Again, that's one fourth. This is one half. So again, between the tube, it could be an organ tube also. And between a clarinet, there is a factor of two. So here you have one octave, octave lower. So the frequencies here will be lower. And, um, so you, you see how, how here it depends on the, um, it depends on the speed, the, the, the speed of sound, right? So, okay. So here I just have very nice slides. So those slides come from the Johnson and Cutnell textbook. And you can visualize, you can visualize the, the standing wave here in a three dimensions here. So that will be anti node. That will be your node. So first, uh, uh, one node here. It's open here, open here. That will be the, the second one. Second harmony, which is twice this one. So again, nice visualization here. You can compare that to a spring. And so let's do this one. I wanted to show you something, but let's do this one first. I lost my So that's a flute, and let's say what they ask. So you close uh, when all the holes are closed on one type of the flute, the lowest note you can sound is C, which is a frequency of 261.6 hertz. So that means that all the, the holes are closed. That means that Everything is closed here, so that will be the longest, longest uh, length that you get, you can get for open and open tube. And that will be also the lowest frequency. If you, if you open one, so that, let's say you open this one. Okay. So this is open. What it makes, it makes the flute shorter. So it will increase the frequency. Okay. So frequency it's given. And the speed of sound is given. And so that will be the fundamental. Okay. 
and they want you to find the, the distance L between here and there. And all, all the, the holes here are closed. That will be the longest length. So you just uh, apply the equation. So 261.6 equals the speed of sound. So 343 over 2 times L. And again, that comes from the book Johnson and Kettner. And they have very nice slides. Okay, so you can solve for L. So 2L equals 343 divided by 261.6 and you divide by 2. And you get what you get. I think you get uh, so you have to take your calculator. I think you get 0 0.656 meters. Six, so that will be about 65 centimeters. Okay? So flute is open at both sides. And let's... Okay, so let's revisit that website. So you have a flute here. And... Uh, you see the holes? So if you put your uh, hand on those holes here, that means that the length here will be the longest, the largest, right? So you will get the lowest frequency possible. And then if you open the holes here, and this one is open as well. So that means so if you open this one, at least this one. So if you open that hole here, so this one is not, um, closed so then you get a shorter length l so a highest frequency largest frequency so what is nice with this instrument is that you can change you can change the length l here you can change the l so if you have a long uh, a large l then you get a low frequency if you make L smaller, then you get the higher frequency. Okay, so again, you have the first, so that will be the first harmonic here with the node here at the center. That will be the second harmonic here. Second harmonic. The third harmonics, fourth harmonics, and the fifth harmonics. But of course, when you are playing music, the first one will give you the pitch, right? But you also find the other harmonics as well. And that's the final wavelength that you get. If you use, for example, an oscilloscope, you will see this wave here. And then what you can see is that how all those harmonics add up together, it's a superposition. So you get a superposition of all the harmonics to get the music that you hear. So that's also a very nice uh, website. So let's go back to the slides. Oh, there is one more problem here. So organ pipe, organ pipe is also open, open tube. So organ pipe, you have open, open, and the length is 0 0.40 meters. And here they only give you the temperature. 
temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. Luckily, there is a, an equation that will give you the speed of sound, the speed of sound as a function of the temperature. And that's going to be the equation here. So it's going to be one plus the temperature in Celsius. So that will be Celsius here divided by 273.15. So you see then that when the temperature increases, the, the speed of sound increases as well, which, which makes sense because, uh, the sound, 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 it uh, happens because of the molecules moving. Stop that. So the air molecules are moving, vibrating, and their vibration, how fast they are moving depends on the temperature. So if you increase the temperature, that means they're going to move faster. So that means they are able to react faster to a sound wave. Okay. So the speed of the wave is actually the speed of those uh, molecules here moving about their uh, position of equilibrium. Okay. So as you increase the temperature, that means the speed of the wave will increase as well. So if you plug that into here, you can do the math and you get, and you get the speed of sound is 340 meter per second. So that would be the speed of sound when you have 15 degrees Celsius. It's about 343 when you have about 20 degrees Celsius. So that will be the speed of sound. So the first, the fundamental, so the fundamental, will be uh, V, the speed, over two times the length of the of, of the pipe here. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 340 over two times 0 0.4. Okay, so you get 425 hertz. And then the second harmonics, which is the first overtones, all you have to do is you multiply by two, right? So it's going to be two times 425, which is 850 hertz. The third harmonic, which is the second overtone, you multiply by three and you get 1275 hertz. Okay. So this is the uh, same thing as before. It's, um, it's a close here. It's close. A uh, pipe. It could be a clarinet, for example. And you get the, uh, those equations here. So this is nice because let me show you first in three dimension. That's also a very nice slide from Judson and Kutnell. You see, this is close here. This, this, uh, the air molecules can move. So that will be the first harmonic, the first uh, that you can get here, the first harmonic, which is one fourth of a wavelength. That's also a nice illustration here. You have two nodes here, here you have one node and you get this equation there. Okay, um, so this is nice because F sub 1, okay, will be V over 4L. That will be the fundamental. So that will be the first, the lowest frequency that you get in a open close tube. If you put a speaker here or, or, or better, if you have like a tuning fork, a tuning fork will sound just one frequency. Okay, so why, why is it nice? Because then that's, that's the way you can measure the speed of uh, sound. Speed of sound. So here is an example of a lab that I used to do with my student. It's very easy to do at home. You just get the tube from a hardware store here. And so you have water in a tall vase, for example. So you see, that will be the length of the tube here, from here to there. 
This is closed here and this is open. And then you take a tuning fork. So you, you strike your tuning fork just, just above here and you move the tube and until you hear the sound getting louder. So that will be your first uh, harmonic, right? And, and, and once you have your first harmonic, you can find the speed of sound. And actually that lab, that lab works uh, really well. So I can show the same lab, but using a simulation. If I find, if I find the lab here, I think it's somewhere. So again, very easy demonstration to be done in physics and very easy way to find the speed of sound. So first you emerge that tube inside the water and then you sound uh, little, little, little by little, you take the tube out of the water, right? And you sound a, a tuning fork just above it until you, and you stop when you hear the very loud sound, right? Inside the tube. So when you hear the lowest frequency, when, when you get that lowest frequency, then you know that you are, uh, you found, you found the fundamental. So the first harmonics, right? And then you, you, you know the frequency because that's going to be the frequency of the tuning fork. You, you know the, the, the length of the tube is one fourth of the wavelength. So you know the wavelength. So you can find the speed of sound. You can even, if you have a very long tube, so then you can find the next uh, harmonics, right? So for n equals one, and then you have n equals two, and then n equals three, and so forth, and so on. Okay, so the other thing interesting is that, let's look at that equation again. So the frequency here is a function of the harmonics number, which is one, three, five, seven, the speed of sound and the length of the tube. So let's say the speed of sound cannot be changed. If you have a given frequency that you cannot change, then you have to change the harmonics number and the length of the tube. Okay, so for example, if you have a lab here, it's also an interesting lab. I don't know if you can find, if I can find the video here. So in that case, you cannot change the frequency. The frequency is given by that tuning fork here. You cannot change the speed of the wave, but you are changing the length of the tube and you are changing the harmonics number. So that means, let's look at the equation again. As L is going to increase, N is going to increase, right? So you're going to find uh, the, the N n equals 1, and then n equals 3, and n equals 5 for the same frequency. So you are just standing, uh, changing the harmonics number and the length. So, okay, that, that, so this is how it's done. You hear the sound, okay? And then the sound is going to get louder, 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 louder. You are increasing the length. Stop. You are at the largest uh, sound that you can hear that means you know there is a harmonics inside doing its job and that will be the the, the lowest frequency uh, that you can get here so the the fundamental n equals one so the frequency will be 5 12 hertz but you get the 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 first uh, first harmonics here then you increase the lamp, then the sound is going to get lower. Okay. And then you have enough, enough place here to have your second harmonic. So n equals three. Stop. You see? That will be the third one, n equals three for the same frequency, but for a largest lamp. And then it's going to go down. So that's L equals three. So harmonics number equals three. Then you increase the length again. 
And then the sound is gonna go up again. Ay, ay, ay. Boom. So you have N equals five. For the same frequency. And that's it. Okay, so let's keep uh, going. Let's go back to the slide here. Let's try to do slide 29, number one. So I'm not going to do all of them. So, uh, what is it? Of a closed organ pipe. So that means it's closed open. Okay, so the length is 0 0.35 meters. The temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. So that means you have to use the equation, um, the, the speed of sound is, you can use that equation here, that's going to be the temperature in Celsius, so 18 over 273.15, so you can pause the video and try to do it, and you get, you get about always the same thing, so 342 meter per second. Okay, so the first frequency, so the lowest frequency, if it's a uh, closed and open, will be V over 4L. So that's going to be 342 divided by 4 times 0 0.35, and you get 244 hertz. Okay, so then um, number two, number two, closed open. So again, close open. Close open, so that's, you have the frequency, fundamental, temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, so they give you the speed. What is the length of the tube? So 343 equals uh, the hertz, hertz, or oh, the speed is also 343, and then here you have 4 times the length. Okay, and uh, you get what you get. One, so the length of the tube is 0 0.25 meters or 25 centimeters. Okay, so that will be F1. The next one will be F3, so the second, uh, the, the first overtone. To go from here to there, then you multiply by 3, right? So it's going to be um, 343 times 3. And then the next one will be 343 times 5. So this is called the harmonics number. So if if the tube was open at its far end, so if it's open, open, so the first the fundamental will be higher, so it's going to be 343 divided by 2L. So the frequency will be divided by 2. Okay. And then, so that's going to be uh, 343 hertz um, times 2, sorry, times 2. Okay, so because with the flute we hear higher frequencies, 
So F2, it's going to be this times 2, so 343 times 2 times 2. And then the third one is equals 343 times 2 times 3, and so forth and so on. Okay, so between the clarinet here and the flute, from here to there, you multiply by two the frequencies. Or we can talk about organ pipe and it will be the same. So by the way, let's go back to that uh, website here. Here you get kind of the same thing. Same idea here. It's closed here, so it cannot move. And this part at the end can move. So here you have a node here, anti-node. So that will be the first. From the first, you go to the third. Okay, so the harmonics number is three. And then you go to the five. So harmonics number is five. Then you go to the seven, to the nine. Then you can mix everything together. That will be a weird wave form that you get. You see it's still a node here, anti-node at the end. And it's a mix of all the harmonics. So the first is in red, the third is in blue, the fifth is in purple, seven is I don't know where, and nine is I don't know where either. Okay? So that's also a very nice uh, simulation. Okay. So let's uh, let's keep going. I'm not go gonna do all of them. So for this one, it's a little bit uh, out of the topic because here they don't talk about standing wave but about longitudinal wave. Okay, so a typical longitudinal wave will be a sound wave, but I think here they talk more about um, uh, like a wave that you make with a slinky. So you, you push and pull, so you're going to make a wave that will move at a given speed. And you see you're going to make those uh, uh, area here where the coils are squeezed. It's called compression. And area when the, um, the coil, coil move away from each other. So the coils don't go anywhere, right? They are just moving in a simple harmonic motion about their equilibrium position. So they squeeze and then they stretch out and then they are squeezed together and then they stretch out. And you see the disturbance moving in this direction. That direction is parallel to the, to the slinky. So this is called longitudinal wave. So anyway, let's try to understand. Yeah, the distance between the compression and reflection is 30. Five centimeters, so it means, for example, this is squeezed together, so it's going to be a compression, and this is move away, and then again compression, and then it's move away, and then it's compression, and then it's moving away, and then it's compression, and so forth and so on. So you can have that will be a maximum here, and then it's going to be minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. Minimum. Okay, so the distance here between a uh, rarefaction and the compression, that's going to be actually half, half of a wavelength. So you can see that here, between here and there, that's going to be your wavelength. So between here and there, that will be half, half a wavelength. Okay? So, then we can say that the wavelength, so the wavelength will be 2 times 0 0.35 meters squared, because this is 0 0.35. So between here and there, 
you're going to have twice that much. And then the speed is the wavelength times the frequency. So it's going to be 0 0.7 times 4, which is about 2.8 meter per second. So it's just an introduction to the next unit. Next unit will be about waves, but I think I'm going to make a new playlist. So that's, I'm going to keep that for next unit. Um, so we can, we, we can do number four. Let's try to do number four. Okay. So let's do this one. So this is a hop and we suppose that it's, uh, it's a uh, fixed above and so you don't know how many how many x you have but should be something like this here and this is a node here this is a node they give you the frequency here six hertz and the speed of the wave is eight meter per second so if the other end is fastened down, so this is fastened here, how far from that end is the first anti-node? So the first anti-node will be here, and you see that that's going to be between here and there. That's going to be, this here is one-fourth of a wavelength. Okay, so... Something like this is one cycle, so that's going to be one wavelength. So that's going to be half of a wavelength. That's another half of the wavelength. So from here to here, it's one fourth of the wavelength. Okay. So that means that let's find out the wavelength first. So speed is frequency times wavelength. So the speed is eight. The frequency is six times the wavelength. So I don't know what I have found. So the wavelength equals 8 divided by 6, which is 1.3 meters. So then, um, so that, that distance here is this divided by 4, right? So it's going to be uh, 1.3 divided by 4. And I think you get 0 0.33 repeating meter so it's about no it's a uh, zero sorry so eight divided by six it's one point three repeating okay so this is repeating and then you divide by four and you get, yes, 0 0.3 repeating meters. So about 33 centimeters. Okay. So next here. So this, this is easy. Number five. But, uh, but let's do it. Just a review. So the, the length here is 0 0.35 meters and that's the speed, the speed of the wave is 180 meter per second. So the fundamental, so the fundamental is V over 2L. So that's going to be 280 divided by 2 times 0 0.35 and you get, what did I get? 2. 257 hertz, second harmonic, which is the first overtone, will be 257 times 2, which is um, 514 hertz, and the third one, it's going to be 257 times 3, 
which is 771 hertz. So this is the first, the second, the third. So when you have a um, pipe, closed pipe and open, so the first one, remember, is V over 4L. And then the next one will be 3V over 4L. And then the last one will be 5V over 4L. I mean, it's not the last one because you can keep going like this, 7L over 4L. So this is called fundamental first overtone, second overtone, third overtone. And I might have said before that the second harmonic, it's typically it should be called the third harmonic, and this is called the fifth harmonic, that will be the seventh harmonic. If, um, if you take that into account, which is N equals three. So that should be called the third harmonic, and that should be called the fifth harmonic, and that will be called the seventh harmonic. Sorry about that. So just now, a parenthesis, because when it's closed at one end and open, we just talked about the clarinet, but actually we can also talk about, you can, you can have a string, we can have a string here, and it's, uh, so we have seen that, right? So that's a string, can be a violin string here. Let's make a small amplitude here. Let's take 0 0.08. It's a very small one. And no damping. Okay, frequency is 0. And you can look for the fundamental. And if you look for the fundamental, it should be about 0 0.4, 0 0.4 hertz, right? It's, it's more like it, right? So you have, that's going to be your first harmonic or the fundamental for a violin or a guitar. Just when the hop here is tightened here, it tightened there. So the second harmonic should be, now it should be at, um, should be at twice that much, right? So it should be at uh, 0 0.8, about there, right? So that should be the second harmonic. You, you have to give it time to build up. So that will be the second harmonic. So you have one node, one node, one node. So two bumps, okay? And one on tie node here, one on tie node here. And of course, you can keep going. So the third harmonic will be 3 times 0 0.4, which is 1.2. So let's see if it works. Here, that will be the third harmonic. Beautiful. Okay, so you have one bump, two bump, three bump, one nodes, two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, and one entire node, two entire node, three entire nodes. Okay, and the next one will be uh, 1.6 hertz. Okay, but what happens now if I have a loose end? Okay, so if I have a loose end, it's like the, 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 the clarinet. So this is tighten and this is loose. So I expect the first harmonic to be half. So it should be, instead of being 0 0.4 hertz, it should be 0 0.2 hertz, right? It's like the clarinet has lower frequency than the flute, so it should be at 0 0.2, the first harmonics. So you just need to give it time to build up. And remember, it's like the resonance frequency, okay? Do you see how can things can go bad at that natural frequency? You see how higher and higher. So it reminds you of the Tacoma Bridge, right? You see here it's about to break and it's even... Now it's out of the tube here. So that will be the first harmonics. Now the, the next one, the overtone, should be at 0 0.3 because you multiply by 3. 
So now you should be at 0 0.3 for the next one. Uh, 0, no, sorry, 0 0.2 times 3. 0 0.2 times 3 is 0 0.6. So we should be here. So 0 0.2 times 3. So 0 0.6. So that will be the second, the next one. So the first overtone, okay? And same thing, the amplitude keep building up because we are, we have uh, reached the natural frequency, the resonant frequency. So it's gonna be 0 0.2 times three. Then you have 0 0.2 times four. Uh, not 0 0.2 times 5. So let's see. 0 0.2 times 5 is 1. Okay, so that will be the fifth harmonics. I don't know what's doing here. Okay. So if the first, the fundamental is 0 0.2 hertz, then the next one you multiply by 3, which is 0 0.6 hertz. And the next one you multiply by 5, which is 1 hertz. And then the next one you multiply by seven, which is uh, 1.4 hertz, and so forth and so on. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is we did number five, uh, number six, tuning fork. So tuning fork is a little bit special because it's an all new physics, but we can we can do some approximation. So let's do some approximation, and then I will tell you why it's just an approximation. So a tuning fork, okay, tuning fork is something like this. So you can think of that here, it's a, it's a node, and here you have a anti node, right? So you might think, okay, maybe I can use the same equation as I have used for the clarinet, which is uh, N times uh, V over 4L. Okay, so we can try to do that to see what we get. So for the fundamental, at least, we can do some approximation and say, okay, so let me show you a website here. It's very nice, another nice website here. You see here, that will be the fundamental, the first, the first mode. You see how the, here, there, it's, um, it's vibrating in this fashion. So it's a fundamental mode. So you can think of it as, um, using the same equation. Okay, using this equation. So maybe the first fundamental will be V over 4L. And again, that's going to be an approximation. So it's going to be the speed, which is 60 divided by, this is times, that's, that's the name of this, 0 0.18. And I got uh, times 4. This is a 4 here. That was a 4 times four times at the denominator and you get 83 hertz. But that's just an approximation because uh, if you look at tuning forks here, if you look at tuning forks, so that's a also a very nice website that uh, I will uh, put the link underneath here. It has special modes because actually it's a bar made of steel. Usually it's steel here. So the first mode, okay, you can 
uh, use an approximation here. The second mode is more complicated. It looks like this. So actually, you have to use uh, other equations. So it's it's not going to be the same equation. And you see, to find the modes and to find the natural frequencies, you have to use uh, another other equations here that include the Young modulus, that include the density of the material, that include the thickness. So density is like inertia. Young modulus will tell you about the restoring force of that material, but it's another equation. So when I hide this this way, it's just an approximation. Okay. So a tuning fork uh, has an um, interesting, I, know, I lost my website again. So this website, so that will be the first, the fundamental vibration of a tuning fork. And then, then you have the second mode. So the second mode, actually, the frequency is six times this one. So if you do the math, you will see that between this frequency and that frequency, it will be six times. But it's, it's very hard to hear. Usually you just hear the first, the first mode. It's very hard to make it, uh, to, to, to sound it. And these, these are the other possible modes here. And uh, you, you can, I have found another website here to show you the computation if you are interested, but it's, it's more advanced. So you can find that the frequency, the frequency of the fundamental depends on uh, that thickness here. It depends on the length here, that makes sense. The Young's modulus, so it, that means uh, it's, it's going to quantify the restoring force. And then the density of the material. So you can plug that into that equation here. So I, I did the computation for you. I, I did the, this here. You can, you can use that equation. I use that equation. I think I use this equation here. Okay. To see if we get something similar. So if you, if you do that, I will let you do it. But if you use that equation here, you can say, okay, a typical tuning fork. So if you have a tuning fork here, typical here, the length, that, that will be A. And A is about three millimeters. The length here we say is six, uh, 18 centimeters. So it's going to be 0 0.18 meters. This here, typical of a uh, tuning fork is about 2.7 times 10 to the negative 3. So 2, uh, no, the Jung modulus, sorry, Jung modulus is about, I lost it, uh, uh, 69 times 10 to the 9. So 69 times 10 to the 9. Pascal and the density is you have to put the right unit. It's going to be about 2.7 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per uh, meters per meter cube. Okay, so it means you take that number and you have to convert in kilogram per uh, cubic cubic meter. So when you do that, that's going to be about 2.7 times 10 to the 3. Young modulus is this number that you have 3, 3 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And you can plug that into there and you're going to get about, I think you get about 100 hertz. About, right? So it's about what we have found previously. So just to tell you that 
you, you can have other materials vibrating and then it's all kinds of computation to find the uh, natural frequencies. Here you have a free bar and again you have your Jung's modulus here. Okay, so that's just a parenthesis here. Okay, I think we're going to stop here. Two octave below 440 hertz. So you have two octave below, divide by two, divide by two. Okay, so that will be 110 hertz. Overtones determine the tune quality of a musical sound. So it's the overtones that allow you to make the difference between a trumpet and a violin. So we talk about that. Um, the distance between two anti nodes, two anti nodes, that's going to be the half of the wavelength, right? So two anti nodes. So again, you have a node here. So this is a anti node. And this is a, this is the node. And that's an anti node. So here you have half of the wavelength. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do so. I'm going to leave that for uh, tomorrow. I'm going to stop here.